Hey, hey, it's Jason ODB, a.k.a. The Lincoln Addict, and want to take a look here at the 65 Lincoln Continental optional AM, FM radio. So some of you may have uh, a 65, maybe you've ridden in one, maybe you've ridden in a different year. Of course, 64, 65 have pretty much the same dash overall, small minor differences. One thing I wanted to do after I purchased this car is kind of show some of these accessories and at certain times maybe even compare versus the 64 that I own. One thing that you'll see here is in the middle, you've got the FM, so I just changed it over to that. Um, I'll talk a little bit about this here in a second. Um, the optional AM FM push button radio, it's fully transistorized and it cost about $85, so it's $84.70. Now it did provide high fidelity sound reproduction through both front and rear speakers. These were standard equipment along with the AM FM push button radio. Uh, a power antenna that you could see over there, that um, they, they suggested that you raise it to 33 inches. So that's kind of cool if you've never heard that. Um, it you know gives you a little bit of insight there. Now the 64 and 65 Lincoln AM FM radios look almost identical. However, there are differences. So in 65, the push buttons are each labeled AM, FM. So with holding the phone with my right hand, I wanted to kind of show you, I have all most of these on FM. What you do is you pull these out and you flip them over and you see AM and you could set these presets and it would pop over to wherever you had it and you saw that flipped in the middle. So, um, you know, I'm not going to spend the time to set any presets because for the most part, this does still work. And I turned it on the other day with Christmas music was playing and I only have the one front speaker hooked up, which is in this area. But um, it's still cool to me that it continues to work. Um, whichever is visible facing up identifies the brand. So you see the first and last is AM, the three middle or FM. Now the on-off volume to the left is attached using a set screw. So that's a little bit different. Um, instead of being pressed on, this is because the 65 radio uh, can be uh, tuned manually by pressing in on the volume knob for AM stations and pulling out. So I wanted to kind of demonstrate this. Right now it's on AM. If you pull this out, you see it flip to FM. If you push it in, it flips to AM. So that's kind of one of those cool things. Uh, once the desired band is chosen, you rotate, of course, the tuning knob on the right to tune the station. A window in the center of the dial identifies the band that you're listening to. So you would just, of course, tune, you know, turn this, and it does go through that middle section there. So um, that's something cool. I kind of just wanted to show everyone. Uh, appreciate the support. Now, um, I do have another radio for this that has the Aurora conversion. And if you're not familiar with that, um, you can basically take this radio out. I'm sure you've seen this on different hot rod shows and whatnot. You could send it in or drop it off, depending on where you live, to a place that will upgrade it to Bluetooth. They'll upgrade it to like newer internals. Robert graciously provided that because he had the Aurora conversion completed. I'm not sure if I'm going to install it only because I do like for, uh, you know, this original system. If I want, I can turn it on. I can um, put the antenna up, which, by the way, is right here. You see that. Um, but the kick panels that he had installed, built rather, and installed, um, those are um, a separate system. You can see some of the wires that are kind of just sitting down there. And in my 64 what i did is i took a bluetooth connector that plugs right into the amp almost kind of like probably started on the marine side where you know if you have a boat you plug in this little uh, adapter that plugs into your amp and then boom you have bluetooth from your smartphone right into the amplifier that's kind of what i'm leaning towards doing um one reason is because then i don't have to take apart the dash which i've done in the 64 um but that's not really the only reason, just because, again, I kind of like that this is uh, self-contained and it still works. Now, the rear speakers aren't hooked up, so you only get the sound out of the front. But it kind of gives you the idea of, hey, the fact that it still works, to me, that's very cool. 
the dash will have to come apart at some point. I've talked to you guys in the past about the amp gauge. Uh, this amp gauge, I do believe, needs to be rebuilt or bypassed in some way because when the car is running, you will see it, it just kind of hops a little bit, as I call it, it bounces rather. So um, more to come on whatever upgrades. I do not think I'm gonna upgrade the dash lights. Uh, in the last video, I talked about the door lights that are down here, the courtesy lights, if you will. And I really like the fact that those are LEDs. It makes entering and exiting the car much better, in my opinion. But I do love the nostalgia of the incandescent bulbs here in the four pods, as well as the speedometer. Of course, the, um, uh, you know, the, the shift deal as well. And then, of course, down here, uh, this one still lights up behind here. And I do believe there is one that lights up behind here, but I don't know if that's working or if it's just very dull. The only other thing I wanted to show is this nice little thing. And I had planned to do this in my 64. Um, you could see right there, you could buy those for very cheap. You can add the volts right there. So a lot of folks are like, well, I want all my gauges working. I get it. That's supposed to be smacked out in the middle like it is now when you're driving. But again, you do have to bypass it or have it rebuilt or, you know, updated in some way or uh, some form or fashion uh, because all the power for inside the car, I've done another video about this, comes through that, that amp gauge. And it has been known to start fires. So if you did ever bypass that, which this one has not been done, you could simply add in here for the cigarette lighter adapter or anywhere. I, I was going to do it in my glove box in the 64 then boom, you have uh, a quick view of what your amps are, okay? Uh, or volts, I should say. Um, that's pretty cool because when the car started, I could see it's well over 14. Anytime, I could just pop open the ashtray and I can see, hey, I'm looking good. Uh, if I throw a battery tender on it, um, which this one's kind of hardwired in to be able to easily plug one in, I can get a quick view of where I'm at. So um, to me, I think it's a great and valuable little item that you can throw on your car. And oh, by the way, these don't cost very much money. So I think that's it for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. And if you've got a 65, many of them have the AM radio. You could sometimes find these. I wouldn't really go out of your way to really upgrade it unless you're trying to really spec out the car with all of the options. And uh, that's one of them. And of course, later in the future, I'll talk about the tilt column, which you can see right there. Uh, in the middle, you probably, unless you've had a tilt column before, you may not have seen this. Typically, they go all the way across, and there is a button at the end of the shift lever. You push that, and the steering column goes up and down. So I will talk more about that in the future. Hopefully, you had a great Thanksgiving. Stay under rise and check out Lincoln Attic Podcast via any podcast app. ODB, take care.